the bane of the Titanic, home to pangeons in the open sea, and with a surface area up to 11,000 square kilometers, icebergs. Today we are taking a look at one of the Gothic icebergs. But before we jump into the cold waters, I want to thank all the people who helped me finding out about the more obscure entries. First and foremost, I want to thank all the people who worked on the gothicarchive.org, a fabulous page where you can find many things about the early versions of Gothic, the development history and other interesting subjects. It is a true goldmine for every Gothic fan, and I will, in the future, take a closer look at some of the subjects presented there. I want to thank Flosha, the project leader and creative director of Phoenix Tales, Delvin, Crygreg, Pangor, Saradoc the Master Speedrunner, Mike Hoga and other developers of the original games for their beautiful interviews that cleared up a lot of things and speculations, all the guys from the original thread on Reddit and of course the whole of Piranha Bytes and THQ. If I forgot to mention somebody, please excuse me and the mess that is my brain. With that out of the way, let's begin. Tier 1. The Barrier Avatars There are three gods in the Gothic universe. Enos, god of fire, light, laws and justice. Adonos, the god of water and balance, and the dark lord Beliar, who watches over the realm of death. It is said on multiple occasions that the gods choose their avatars. Think of it as champions who fight for a certain deity. One can speculate that the hero is the avatar of Enos or maybe Adonos? Who knows? The Under Dragon in Gothic 2 was definitely the avatar of Beliar until we killed it and Xardas sucked up all his evil energies. Retcons. Retroactive changes in the continuity. Well, obviously, Gothic has tons of retcons. I don't know if the creator of the chart had anything particular in mind, but I want to explain a few of them. 1. In the beginning, it was not clear whether the Valley of Mines was part of the mainland or an island. And while in the cancelled sequel it is part of the mainland, Gothic 2 put it in the middle of the ocean. Two. The Mages split into the circle of water and fire. It's more of an unlucky interpretation of one of the dialogues, however, they were always meant to be different circles. 3. The gods being changed into stereotypical deities. For example, Enos became inherently good and Beliar evil. Before that, it was more shrouded in mystery, but also had room for more nuances. Beliar was the god of death, which made him part of the natural cycle of life, so to speak. But in Gothic 2, he became the driving force behind the main antagonists in the franchise. 4. Another huge retcon is the nature of the orcs. In the first game, it was said that they summoned the sleeper to destroy their enemies, but then the archdemon turned against them and cursed them with undeath. They were a regular culture just trying to survive, but in Gothic 2, they were changed to loyal servants of Beliar, acting as his foot soldiers. Fear spell, the scream. In Gothic 3, the spell fear, or terror, uses an icon that is clearly inspired by the painting, the scream, made by Edvard Munch. Ben's animals are sentient. There is a farmer called Ben who has a farm at around Trellis. If you start a fight on that farm, the animals apparently gather around and watch the fight like humans would do. Unfortunately, I couldn't recreate the scenario. The community patch and content mod may have fixed this and Gothic 3 without any mods was impossible. All I could find was this little screenshot. Where is the guru? This is the title of an error message that can sometimes occur in Gothic 3. To honor this beautiful piece, the creators of the Gothic 3 community patch implemented a secret quest which is aptly named after this famous error. The Morgrad. 
this is the name of Gothic's world. You know, like our planet is called Earth. Gothic 3's missing crew members. In Gothic 2, you have a lot of options how to build your crew for the Erdorov expedition. For example, you can take one captain with you out of three choices. Toll of the mercenary, Jorgen, the former captain who can be found near the monastery, and Jack, the man guarding the lighthouse. In the third installment, we reunite with our four friends, Vatras, Angar, Laris, and Lee, but the Smith Bennett, Biff, Wolf, Girion, and any of the three captains don't appear in Gothic 3. In Extremo. I don't know what the creator meant with this, but yeah, In Extremo is the band that plays in some versions of Gothic 1, and yes, they are indeed a real medieval rock band from Germany. Check them out. Fun fact the old camp music is based on their interpretation of the song Hermannelig which they also play in the game in Chapter 2. Hermannelig is an old Swedish folk song about a female troll who wants to marry a man. He refuses, however, because she isn't a Christian woman. Nameless hero is Mike Hogan. Well, both of them look very, very similar, and for a long time I was under the assumption that they modeled the hero after Mike, one of the founders of Piranha Bytes, who worked on Gothic 1, Gothic 2 Plus Expansion Pack, Gothic 3 and Risen 1. In an interview, it was however revealed that the hero's face being so similar to Mike's likeness was more of a coincidence. Kinda suspicious if you ask me. Swimming into Carinas. It is common knowledge that there are multiple ways to get into the port city in Gothic 2, and if you, for example, go mountaineering on the north side of Carinas, you can drop into the water and swim right into the harbor. Don't forget to talk to Laris when you do that, though. Eternal Wanderer's staff is Gandalf's staff. The weapon can be found in Gothic 3 and is an integral part to the storyline, and it shares a lot of similarities with the staff of Gandalf, the Wizard of Lord of the Rings. It is made of wood, looks like a gnarled branch, and has some sort of crystal on top. Yeah, I can see that. 13th Mage Confusion In Gothic 1 it is said that the barrier was created by 13 mages. Please, be patient. Well, when we, the 12 magicians, created the barrier back then, our magic powers were directed and controlled by a 13th magician. A 13th magician? I thought there were only 12. But that is wrong, and could also be considered a retcon. However, Mike Hoga explained this in a video where he said that it was always planned that 12 mages created the barrier, but some other developer misread this, and so the voice actors got the numbers wrong when they recorded the voiceover. The thing is, Milton only became a fire mage when he was thrown into the colony, so he doesn't count. I guess a simple mistake goes quite a long way. Eternal Wanderer Well, this lore character led the nomadic tribes of Varant, and he was the first man to be chosen by Enos, becoming his avatar. His story is told in books and stone tablets in Gothic 3. In the beginning, the nomads roamed the land, and the Eternal Wanderer led the way. And Enos spoke to the Eternal Wanderer, Lay aside your staff, and in its stead, Enos gave him the scepter, and the Eternal Wanderer became his servant. Lack of female characters. Kind of self-explaining. There aren't many women in Gothic 1. They are mistresses to the Orberons and Iberion, and there are no quests associated with them. To be honest, I would like to see a few additional quests that involve them in the remake, but in general, women should still be a rarity in the Valley of Mines. Gothic 2 changes the situation and we have a lot more women, and they are way more significant. Hell, some of them have big potential, are really likable, and I wish they would play a bigger role. Uh, then Gothic 3 comes along and suddenly the women that we encounter have barely anything to say anymore and their role is heavily diminished. What a mess! Quentin's Bandit Camp 
In the north of the Valley of Mines, near the Troll Canyon, you can find a band of bandits and one named character called Quentin. These guys will kill you on sight and their existence was a bit of a mystery, at least for me. People speculated about them being part of the new camp, but very recently I learned that they had no real purpose and just did their own thing up there in the mountains. This information is from an interview with Mike Hoger from a while back. Next death makes no sense. Look, the man is a guard. Why would he pick some mushrooms for the cook of the outer ring? On top, why would a trained guardsman be killed by a bunch of mole rats? People speculated about this, but Mike again confirmed in an interview that it's just what it is. A guard who picked mushrooms for the cook in the outer ring, getting killed by a bunch of mole rats. And here we are at the end of the first entry of the Gothic Iceberg, and we covered the barrier, the lofty skies above the iceberg. And there is so much more to come. So if you'd like to see that, please hit like, subscribe and leave a comment to tickle the algorithm. And with that said, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.